Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChartsTrading.com and today is May 4th, 2018 and this is a market recap. <clears throat> so pretty straightforward, similar to last week's um, review. We'll look at stocks. The test of overhead resistance for stocks are coming up. We'll look at bonds, junk bonds, approaching fresh lows. Uh, we'll look at dollar in more detail as it rallied. Gold pulls back uh, as expected because of the dollar. We'll look at natural gas, oil as it broke to fresh highs and uh, energy companies seem to want to go higher from here. And we'll finish off with crypto review. Okay, so let's start with S&P 500 futures. This is uh, a symbol ES1 exclamation point on tradingview.com. Uh, also, please hit the like button, uh, it's somewhere below here. And if you are watching this for the first time, please hit the subscribe button as well. Uh, this really helps um, to keep the video channel going. So I hear, uh, if you have any comments, by the way, also make any comments below. I'll try to get to as many of them as possible. Uh, so briefly again, um, we're looking at S&P 500 futures here. Um, on this chart, you can see four colored lines, green, blue, red, and yellow. These are my uh, support resistance indicators, and you can find out more about them about MasterChefTrading.com. So the way I'm reading this chart currently is I see that um, we had an intermediate support break here on the 24th, uh, or possibly even on the 20th of April. And then you can see that since the breakdown, so we have um, on the 24th, the price attempted to rally above this uh, resistance line. Notice that on the 26th of April 2018, also the price attempted to rally above this resistance line. And then again on the 30th of April. So, so far I see no breakout and Today action was quite strong. We had a, you know, 1.1 percent gain uh, on the futures, and that translated to about um, 1.29 percent gain on the S&P 500 ETF SPY. So, generally speaking, this chart I'm still looking at it from the point of view uh, of a bull market. If or when we break below this. Um, support line in 254 for S&P 500 ETF SPY. Um, that would be like a caution, pretty strong caution. And then if we continue lower to around 244 currently, then that would be a really not a good sign at all. So, so far this hasn't happened and we're basically trading in a range here for the past uh, few months, you know, since February. Uh, May, you know, just started, so we have sell in May and go away mentality probably kicking in. Summer months are, generally speaking, not great for stocks. They are more difficult to trade. There's a lot more chopping around, and quite often the stock market actually goes down during those months. So, overall, not a very exciting chart, and I personally am actually staying out of too many uh, new positions you know, equity positions, and my portfolio is, I kind of lightened up my portfolio and I have a lot of cash just sitting around and waiting for good opportunities. Um, you know, with, with my subscribers, I'm basically saying that I want to see, um, a not, you know, a close above this blue resistance line. And notice that we actually had a similar episode here on the 16th of April of this year, and I thought we we're going to go higher and break out, but notice that this breakout so far has failed and we have, um, you know, uh, sold off. So, again, I'm watching and I'm not exactly sure where this is going to go, so I'm basically watching this for the direction. Overall, it's a bullish chart, but currently it's you know, kind of range bound, I guess is the word. Um, Apple broke out to fresh highs. This is a fresh high right there today on the fifth, on the fourth of uh, May. Um, so 
definitely a bullish chart. Uh, we actually had several alerts here uh, for my subscribers here. So again, overall, uh, quite a bullish chart. And by the way, you can get those indicators on your chart, just ask. All right, so S&P 500 now sectors are quite mixed. So let's look at various sectors. Uh, let's look at first uh, bullish sectors. So here's XLK technology. Uh, notice that it is trading above uh, this blue, blue support line. So it's you know quite a strong looking chart. Uh, here's XLY consumer discretionary and uh, also trading above this blue resistance uh, support line. So overall, this is a, a very good sign. So we got two very large and important sectors of the stock market, the technology and the consumer discretionary, which are definitely in a bull market. And so far, I don't see too many issues with them. Now, we have several other sectors that have come under uh, relatively strong selling pressure. So let's look at some of those. Here's industrial industrial sector, uh, XLI. Notice that we had a break below uh, this minor support here at on the 24th. And then we just continued selling and notice that we bottomed out just exactly around this red support line. And now we're trying to search from here. But overall, this is a weaker chart than the general stock market because you can see that the, the price is trading um, you know, lower than S&P 500. Um, so it's a weaker chart. You can notice that it's trading uh, around the blue line, whereas XLI was trading around is trading around the red line here. So um, relative weakness on the industrials. Here is XLB, consumer um, or other uh, materials sector, and you can see this one broke down actually even earlier uh, below this support line on the 23rd of March. And now it's again kind of trying to find direction. Uh, recent action in a healthcare fund is definitely not encouraging and we're I'm seeing a uh, actually a gap below this red line here and the push lower. So we're approaching fresh lows for the 2018. Not a very good sign. Here's Johnson & Johnson, for example. And notice these are fresh lows on Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson is a huge company and a big part of S&P 500. So uh, when such companies are trading uh, actually at 52-week lows, that's, uh, again, not a very good sign. So we got uh, also um, consumer or other financials, XLF, and, you know, another fresh low for the year, but not 52-week low yet. So... Again, not a very good sign here. So um, let's continue to some of the other sectors. Utilities, XLU, this one, you know, a while back I said to basically avoid it as early as uh, February of this year. And if you so desire and if you are sophisticated enough, then you could potentially try and uh, short it, for example, with uh, buying put options. And if I was shorting it, I would probably buy a put option at 51 bucks. <clears throat> and uh, real estate, IYR, also a relatively you know weak sector, bearish break here uh, in January of this year, and notice really just great shorting opportunities around the red line. Now it it's trying to break out. I'm still not convinced that this is a true breakout, but if we see a you know a move higher to around seventy eight, seventy nine dollars, then uh, we can uh, consider it a reversal. So far, I'm seeing still a um, still a, a bearish security that I would um, likely short if I so desire. I'm not a big fan of shorting equity in general, so because of the um, bullish bias of the stock market. Um, and let me see what I missed. So XLE Energy, one of the stronger sectors actually. Energy, you can see big rally here. And now potential breakout, we could see a fresh highs here, I think. Yeah, I think we can see fresh highs on this on this sector. So you can see that overall we got, you know, energy, um, consumer discretionary technology 
so we got three sectors which are doing you know pretty good quite well we got several sectors that are doing so so we got healthcare um, industrials also doing not great but not that bad and we also have um, material sector also doing okay the sector that is outright you know very bearish is of course um, consumer staples XLP you can see big drop here um, you know as early as again February late February I sent my subscribers an avoid alert right there on the 28th of February notice that the price came up exactly to this red support resistance line and sold off hard exactly from there so again if you're potentially using options to short so you can short at that price level so in this case it would have been around uh, 54 55 dollars so you would you would be buying a put here um, right so and then utilities and um, real estate you know not not doing great but overall trying to make a stand so the market is very mixed and it's kind of difficult to see where it's going and that's why I'm sort of avoiding um, aggressively buying and obviously I'm avoiding aggressively shorting as well so overall I would be just like you know watching the price action and if we see a breakout or a breakdown then we will act accordingly currently it's just a trendless trendless market so to speak let's continue to bonds so let's start with junk bonds here's J and K um, so again we're looking um, at this chart from a point of view of a bear market uh, you can see that we had a break to fresh lows here on in um, February of this year 2018 a lot of selling a bounce so this is a classic dead cat bounce you know we have a a direction change from bull market into a definite bear market we had a bull market in other words the price was appreciating up to let's say um, the 2nd of February 2018 and then from that point on what I see is a reversal into a downtrend into a bear market so when I see a downtrend I usually um, look for opportunities to sell to short so here on this particular chart JNK you can see a nice opportunity so if you shorted let's say at $36 you can do again buy put options here it would have worked twice very nice opportunities right there we'll get arrows right there so again overall junk bonds are important to the health of the stock market and I continue to say that same thing that uh, correlations between junk bonds and stock market are high so if one continues lower maybe the other one will continue lower with it so we got high yield bonds and stocks moving together in lockstep so again I'm wondering if we see a fresh low on junk bonds perhaps the stock market um, will continue lower so that is why I am kind of ambivalent about being aggressively bullish or aggressively bearish on the stock market currently let's continue to bonds with bonds rather here is the general bond market AGG you can see that we're trading at fresh lows again I um, I got rid of I sold all of my bonds um, pretty early in January February of 2018 here so in any of my return you know I don't have any bonds in my retirement portfolios if or when we'll see a reversal we'll you know act accordingly but for now I'm just simply staying out of this uh, security here is the LQD which is a um, investment grade corporate debt again also fresh lows right there on the um, 2nd of uh, May of this year so I'm basically staying out of bonds uh, and if you so desire you could short it on a rebound but you know it's it's up to you really <clears throat>
All right, let's continue to the dollar. Okay, so here's the dollar DXY on the daily uh, time frame again. Here, actually, a few uh, last, the video before last, I was saying that I'm expecting a rally to around 93 bucks. So <laughs> we got exactly that. And now, if I was trading this, I would potentially be considering a uh, short option here, you know, to short it. Um, notice that to try, you know, the, the price currently has very little distance to travel to above this um, support resistance line, which is currently at 94.26. So if I was trading it, I would either short it with a very tight stop on a close below above the 94, or um, I would just watch it and see if we perhaps get a, a push lower and then a, another close below 90, you know, 186 now. That would be a really good sign that we're, you know, going to continue lower. So again, this is a finely poised security and it could kind of go either way. Um, if we see a breakout above 94 here, then uh, gold will certainly come under pressure and we'll get to gold in a second. But let's do first um, the individual currencies. Here is Euro versus US dollar. Again, notice that it is currently trading below uh, this minor support. Uh, minor support. Well, actually, in this case, it's a major support. And if it continues lower to 1.1634 currently, then uh, we could see uh, a reversal into a bear market for Euro. Here's British pound versus US dollar. Same thing, a lot of selling. Notice a break uh, below this blue, blue support line on the 1st of May and continuation lower. So I, I'm, you know, watching the price action for either a continuation and the reversal. If we see a reversal below, or rather if we see a close below, you know, 1.325, then I think we have reversed into a, a downtrend. US dollar is a Japanese yen. No, again, notice how close we are to a fresh bull market for US dollar versus Japanese yen. All we need to do is get above like one one eleven, and then I think at that point we should start looking for uh, opportunities to buy. <clears throat> so, yeah, it, it, we could be seeing a reversal um, in the US dollar. Australian dollar. Here is what I am uh, what I meant when I say. Um, a support break so we had a support break right there on the 23rd and notice that all it, sometimes all we have to do is just short it right there and notice a nice move towards um, again the fresh lows here for Australian dollar New Zealand dollar same thing you can see that we broke below this red line on the 25th Again, uh, you can find out more about these lines at MasterChatTrading.com. <clears throat> so, on the 25th, we broke below this uh, support line, and you can see we had a pretty nice move down afterwards. Uh, so, if you shorted exactly at the red line, it would, this would have been already a uh, about 90 pip gain. Uh, US dollar versus Mexican peso. US dollar versus Mexican peso. No, yes, you know we're breaking out so the dollar is gaining now versus Mexican peso again uh, interesting very interesting and finally Canadian dollar is that was Canadian dollar kind of indecisive I thought we are going to continue higher in fact I opened the position here but I got stopped out immediately because my stop was like just a few pips really below this red line now you can see that I got stopped out for no good reason, but there is no way to know this. We could have continued; it could have continued lower. So you have to respect your stops. That's part of the psychology of trading. Okay, let's continue to um, gold. Here is XAU, so gold versus US dollar. And if I what I just showed is <clears throat> if the dollar is strengthening, and in this case gold is over US dollar. So if the dollar is strengthening, it will pull this. Um, graph lower but in vice versa if the gold is strengthening it will pull this graph higher 
if the dollar is weakening, it will also um, pull the graph higher. And vice versa, if the gold is weakening, uh, the dollar will be winning this battle. So there are four possibilities, but only two directions. Four possibilities of a reason for um, the, the price movement. In, in general, DXY dollar index moves opposite to gold. So you can see the pretty clear relationship, inverse relationship. <clears throat> so gold you can see right now is currently at the support line. You can see it's trying to bounce here. If the dollar decides to um, continue, you know, reverse and continue lower, then obviously gold will benefit. But if the dollar continues higher, then gold will, uh, I guess, the word is it will get slaughtered. Because, yeah, we can easily push to 1200 if we um, take out the support here at 1300. Um, at 1260, possibly lower if we break, if we, you know, don't hold here. Gold miners are, you know, were on my avoid radar uh, also in, in, in late February here. So this bounce, I mean, I I don't want to short it because gold is in an, still technically in an uptrend, but the gold miners are in a downtrend. So it is, it is, you know, confusing and I guess the word is incongruent. So we are trying to find a... I'm, I'm trying to see which way this will break, and I need to confirm it with uh, gold and gold miners moving in the same direction. Currently, they're just all over the place. So, I'm, again, I'm cautioning my subscribers against trading gold until we clarify which way this is going. Here's natural gas uh, futures. Um, you should not analyze UNG. Here's UNG. Uh, because this right here back in uh, December, these are all-time lows. Not even 52-week lows, those are all-time lows. The reason being is UNG, it has a, what's called slippage, and it will lose value with uh, passage of time. So here is natural gas futures, which is the chart you should be analyzing, not the UNG. And here it's we, have, we saw a feeble bounce from mid-April into... <clears throat> Late April, I know we were already selling off, and now on Friday we closed below this yellow support line. So we could just simply collapse here and make a fresh low. Uh, in either case, if you know we bounce to around three bucks, like I would personally be interested in shorting it. So let's wait for price action to confirm. Okay, let's look at oil. Here's light crude oil futures. Uh, this are fresh 52-week highs here. Actually, this alert was sent to my subscribers. So if you held on to this through this, you would have had a very nice gain here. So overall, oil currently is in an uptrend, and uh, I would be looking to buy it uh, on any sizable pullback. Energy, XLE, looking okay, um, compar comparable... Uh, comparing this sector to other sectors, that I, as I said in the beginning of the presentation, you can see that we had a breakout here, and so far we're holding the breakout. So this looks very promising. We could we could go to fresh highs here. Of course, some of the components of XLE, biggest one is uh, Exxon Mobil. This one is dragging its feet and kind of this is a bearish security. You notice we had a break below. Um, yellow support line. So basically a fresh low here and now a bounce. Notice where it got shorted. Imme exactly at this red line. So you could be buying put option for example here at um, the red line. Another bounce. Again you can see you can be buying a put option here at the red line. So this particular security looks bearish. Bearish but CVX um, the Chevron is the opposite. It looks actually pretty good. Similar to XLE, similar pattern to XLE. Notice the uh, breakout as well here. Okay, and let's wrap up with Bitcoin. Um, I th I think it's I think it's in a bear market currently. I mean, anything is possible, but you know, right now I I, I think this is a bearish security, so I would be looking to short it. Um, actually. Even right now, 
if I was trading it. <clears throat> Ethereum looks a little stronger than Bitcoin, so I can see the rally continues. Pretty big rally, and I mean, this thing moves like crazy. So overall, if I was trading it, I would be um, looking for bearish patterns. So for example, here's one on the 25th. Of April but notice there was no follow-through but my stop for this particular trade would have been a close above 960 you know about this blue line at 964 finally uh, Litecoin LTC USD uh, last time we had a nice break here on the 17th of March with a 27% gain this one didn't really work out so we're still waiting which way it will break but again for me to become uh, interested in buying this, uh, we need to see a close above uh, this blue line currently at 243. All right, uh, please again hit the like button. And if you haven't yet subscribed, do subscribe. Uh, then head over to mastercharstrading.com. That's mastercharstrading.com and sign up uh, here. I think it's a reasonable price because you get the actual indicators. You can, I will share the indicators with you and you can use them on your chart. So I think it would be um, quite helpful. All right. If you have any questions, please send them in. If, again, if you have any comments, do make them below. Uh, thanks for watching and have another great trading week. Bye-bye.